So you you failed, right? What was your worst fail, if you, you remember? My worst fail <laughs> was that. Because like I said, I'm not a numbers person. I hate numbers. And there I was doing stats and you need to do stats um, in order to complete your qualification. And I think it was a test. Oh, we used to write tests every Friday. I don't remember, but it was a test. And we still had the notice board. I don't know. Do they still have the notice board? No, this days the- they is, is, is they get their marks on on emails or this uh, learning, learning software, learning sites and stuff. Uh-huh. Well, we had the notice board and you would go up, look for your name, then look for your mark. And everybody around you is screaming and they are excited. Now you're panicking. And I was there looking for my name and I found my name and I looked and I had a negative, was it a negative 20 or a negative 10? Wow. I failed to the point where I was owing marks. I got negative 20. Ooh. Did I not get shattered? That negative mark. I didn't even know about negative marking. It was the first time. And here I am owing marks. Um, so yourself, you are from uh, Soweto, you know, M Sotra, they call it. Uh, uh, Ikasi. Ekas, you know, I didn't know that you are from Ekas. I, I thought that you are from maybe Eastern Cape. Uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you know, and stuff like that. So for you to come to university wasn't like a very big transition then, was it? It was. It was a big transition. It was a big issue. It was just something that was different. So, yeah, coming from Soweto, it's like once you get your matric, then a lot of people, because of finance or circumstances, usually they can't study further. And like I said, you don't have a lot of information on what exactly is out there. So, yeah, me being able to apply to university and get into university was a big transition and, you know, a big deal. What are some of the challenges that you, uh, when I don't look like you had such challenges, I can bet on that. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I had challenges. Like I what? Mean, finance. Finance oh, is finance. a big challenge when you yeah, go to market. Obviously. Sure, it's a big challenge. But I think that was my biggest challenge was finance. And then now in university, maneuvering around and stuff like that, um, how was the journey for you? Well, besides getting into accounting first and then from there leaving accounting to information systems and everything. But how was your university experience in general? So I think maybe because I'm from Soweto and I went to Rand Girls High School. Rand Girls High School is literally down the road from this. So it wasn't a big transition it wasn't like city lights tall buildings you know for some people it's a big deal because maybe they're from the rural areas and now living in this big city i traveled from my primary my primary is also down the road from this high school is also down the road from this so i was used to that environment that Bramfontein environment so it wasn't a big deal i think the challenge was now living on my own because in high school, you always travel back home. So now you are living on your own. You have all this freedom. You have new friends. You also want to, you know, experience the city life. But, you know, after some time, I just realized that, you know, I'm familiar with this place. I know this place. So it's not really something that exciting. No, that, that, that was a good, um, I think, like, um, rent, I mean, rent, um, rent girls, uh, uh, especially those schools, you know, in the BAPS, like, you know. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, those are good schools. I think they, they do, in a way, prepare you in some form or another for this transitioning and stuff like that. So, um, but the freedom, man, um, has it ever gotten to you to a point where you're like, hey, now this freedom is... Has to be tamed, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 
the freedom never got to me. I feel like I'm such I'm such a church girl. Oh my word. I just wanted to go to church, go back to my room. I was most probably boring. But more maybe in first year you're excited, you have new friends, they want to go out, you also go out with your friends. Then you come to a point where you realize that you know this is not actually who I am. I enjoy going out, but at some point I'm just like, no, I'd rather just go to church and be that boring girl who goes to church, comes back to my room, travels back home to Soweto. So uh, the freedom never got to a point where it was like, girl, calm down. No. Yeah, because it's one of the crippling effects that I've I've seen a lot, especially with students, especially those of us who came from backgrounds that were so strict and now when we came to varsity it was like oh my goodness you know so the, the, the freedom and everything like that but what would you say is the strategies that perhaps helped you throughout your university um you know time you know okay if any <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i had like specific strategies it was just constantly remembering where you come from and for me home was not very far it was just here in Soweto so for me it was like you need to finish your degree so you can help out at home and you know make a better life for yourself and that was my strategy to just finish and go work I just wanted to get that qualification so I can just make a better life for my family and myself. And I think that's what kept reminding me to say, you know, this is what you are actually here for. Yes, you can go out partying. I mean, I think there's nothing wrong with mm. trying to find out who you are, going out with friends, partying, but you must always remember the limit and remember what exactly you are there for. Like I said, I did try partying, going out with friends, then because it wasn't who i really am so you know i just went back to my normal self and i got used to the university life and everything but the goal was always to just finish my qualification and get a job have you ever failed a course or maybe let's say a test or something like that well i, I know that does it don't we all fail i feel like if you <laughs> go to this and you've never <laughs> failed you are a genius or something i i actually know someone who actually never failed a thing like they've never failed anything they were doing law and i remember so they they happened to fail their learners and it it came in hard on them and i was like oh dude it's just the learners they're like hey but i never failed anything i was advanced wow. i never failed from first year wow. up until i got out and stuff like that so why am i failing a learners uh even i mean uh, it's something that i should get in the first year because i'm asking this because most of the time i i, I have students who they would like because for them it becomes a shock and of which yeah. for, for 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 all of us especially when we come to university and we fail probably for the first time and it's like wow oh i just did just that happen and and also when we graduate and when people are now working we never talk about we talk about the success and we magnify it but we never yeah. talk about the the failing the challenges and when someone looks at it from that point they just think that it's just success 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 mm. success they don't see the the potholes in between and stuff like that so you you failed right what was your worst fail if you, you remember my worst fail <laughs> was that because like i said i am not a numbers person i hate numbers and there i was doing stats and you need to do stats um in order to complete your qualification and i think it was a test oh, we used to write tests every friday i don't remember but it was a test and we still had the notice board i don't know do they still have the notice board no these days the they is 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 they get their marks on on emails or this uh, learning learning softwares learning sites and stuff uh -huh. Well, we had the notice board and you would go up, look for your name, then look for your mark and everybody around you is screaming and they are excited. Now you panicking and I was there looking for my name and I found my name and I looked and I had a negative 
was it a negative 20 or a negative 10 wow. i failed to the point where i was owing marks i got negative 20 Ooh. did i not get shattered that negative mark i didn't even know about negative marking it was the first time and here i am owing marks that's how bad i failed i got negative and you know it was a shock like shock but it wasn't really a shock because i knew i wasn't good in this but it was a shock that you could get negative yeah but it was also like yeah and i think that was the wake-up call to say let me try find a study group or somebody to help me with this i remember also i got seven percent um it was a uh, i was doing business accounting they did not wrap me like you know. <laughs> <laughs> and economics i it, also failed yeah economics. you know i remember i had to repeat economics for another semester and even that was like oh yeah. i'm getting to the point now i'm repeating economics again yeah I remember I went there also and I went at night because there was no traffic to the notice board, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and I had a ruler, you know, <laughs> to just, okay. you know, make sure that actually this is my mark. <laughs> and I got the shock of my life, went back to my room, but I was in denial. I was like, nah, that's not me. Like they've made a mistake. I need a remarking or all of those type of things. And you, you touched right now on study groups and stuff. Um, were those some of the strategies that make you to come back? What are you know some of the things that you did from that failure that you were like, okay, now wake up call, I need to do this, I need to do that, and do this. What were those for you? Yes, it was study groups. I think study groups helped a lot because when even if I tried to go back to my room and say the next one I'm going to, it was never going to happen because I think I also had this internal fear of maths and everything. So whenever I'd get to my room, I just start panicking. But when you're with a study group, then people help you out, you know, they help you calm down. They show you tricks to say, no, you can do it like this and that. Mm. So even though I never got like a distinction in it, but I was able to go through it pass and you know move on but study groups are what really helped me exam tips oh exam tips <laughs> my exam tips was just to study <laughs> yeah. I was just studying and try to study maybe like i did different things in university because like you have different years your first year can be easy second year is different so some years i did the whole thing like no listen in the lecture write down notes then by the time you need to study you're just revising and then at some point it didn't work now i had to study midnight i'm there studying trying to cram all these things you know cram pass forget i was doing <laughs> that strategy as well so i was just doing different things but my strategy that i knew was that the library never worked for me like yeah. i get to the library and i'm just distracted by everyone i just get even more nervous that sure it's really exam season everyone's studying but mm. at least when i'm in my room i can concentrate and calm myself down then if we have a study group i go to the study group get the tips then come back to my room and you know study again by myself i guess it's about knowing what works for you because I remember the, the issue of the library as well. You know, when you walk into the library and you get in there and you sit next to somebody and you found that person there and they're just so concentrated and now you want to leave and you just feel this guilt, like, <laughs> why am I leaving? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These people the are pushing course, you know, but it works for some people. I think it's just finding actually what works for you and, and, and stuff like that. So the part of the university experience is not only studying, you know, um, also, and I think that's where we also need to learn the soft skills, like maybe leadership, whatever the issues are, and maybe participating in other things. Well, did you participate in other things? Or when I was just like, you know what, I'm here for the degree. I'm going to do what the degree requires me to do. You are not like maybe in other, you know, societies or, um, you know, other Maybe students councils and everything like that how did you build up because i know it's a big thing especially when you're going to cooperate um this whole thing of soft skills um i mean your cv not just being about qualifications 
needs to be rich will they say that and stuff like that did you double in those things i mean not not really, not really. <laughs> sure i what helped me was having friends who are studying the same course as me so you know because of that you're able to discuss that oh maybe if there's a what do they call when all those companies come and career you, fairs yeah so if there's a career fair then we can help each other out uh, did you see this company you know let's go to that company together oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's get information so having like people who studied the same course really helped because they were there to motivate um to motivate each other like we would go on different websites if somebody finds something interesting they'd say look at this maybe we'll get a job here and all of that and then in terms of societies i just joined the church society the student fellowship and that was the only society i went to and also there i got to meet a lot of people mm. um got to interact with a lot of people doing different courses sure. just people from different backgrounds so that also helped 